Hey guys, it's Jen over at jenscrappypages.blogspot.com and this is today's project. It's just this cute little crab from the Your Sublime stamp set and when I put this together, which was actually a couple months ago, it's just taken me this long to get around to doing it, well, and for good reason, um, but I decided to make a little, um, my own background paper out of the crab. Um, and the reason I didn't do it is because I didn't have the real red marker that matched and I tried a different uh, method of coloring and I wasn't really thrilled with it so um, so I finally got my marker and this is what we have the supplies that I used for it um, is the your sublime stamp set and this is retiring it is available um, guaranteed available through May 22nd but then after that, it's while supplies last until May 31st. So I just really love this stamp set. So if you like it, you might want to go ahead and um, get with your demonstrator and order it. So um, dies, um, I use the stitched shapes framelits and my layering circles framelits. And then um, I used Versamark because we're going to emboss the crab when we stamp him out and then the archival stamp pad, the basic black. A real red marker um, and embossing powder. And then for cardstock, I have a five and a half by eight and a half basic black, one by five and a half, and then a three by three square that you'll cut the scallop circle out of. Real red cardstock is four by five and a quarter, a three by three, which you'll cut out the circle from. And then I have two three and three quarters by five, one for the inside and one that we'll be stamping our background out on, and a five eighths by five and a half. And then when I stamped out my crab, I used shimmery white cardstock, which is two and three quarter inch square. So let's get started on stamping out the background and then getting our crab done. I think we're going to do that first. So I'm going to bring in a piece of scrap paper here. And the crab, when you get it, is going to come with the sentiment on it. Um, but I did not want to have the sentiment stamped along with it. And you certainly could for the background, but I went ahead and cut the sentiment out in order to stamp out my crab. And, <coughs> excuse me, I had a little tickle in my throat. So we're just going to randomly stamp this crab out on this piece of paper. Sometimes I like to start with um, a little bit bigger piece of paper for this particular um, thing, but we'll, we'll work with what I've got here because I didn't want to stamp out a whole entire sheet, but that's what I initially did. So then I'm just going to um, kind of put him like in a little triangle. And so my next one is going to go here. And I just had him at different, uh, different angles, but all kind of going into each other. So that's what you will end up with when you're done. And then you're going to add back the sentiment on here, which is really easy because it sticks nicely. And then we're going to stamp him out in um, Versamark and then in the basic black. But I need to wash my stamp off first. So hopefully I got this clean enough. I don't have this uh, cleaner for this. Um, but hopefully it'll work and my pad's kind of getting icky anyway. So I just went ahead and I ink up my Versamark first. Make sure you have a nice good uh, layer of Versamark on there. And then I'm going to go ahead and take and stamp that down. And then I'm going to get my embossing powder ready for when I stamp him down. And then I'm just going to quickly cover him with embossing powder. And 
tap off the excess. And if you haven't embossed before, this is a pretty easy way to do it, to kind of get your feet wet in embossing. I really like doing that, especially if I'm going to be coloring in my image, because I feel like when I emboss, it gives a little bit of a raised image on there, which then I feel keeps the ink from going outside of the image that you're trying to color in. So I'm going to go ahead and get this um, with my heat gun and melt all that embossing powder. Okay, so what I did is I picked it up and very carefully so you don't burn your hands. I wanted to make sure that all of my embossing powder was completely melted. So sometimes it helps if I just put it at a different angle where the light catches it and that way I can tell that it's completely done. So um, the reason that I use the shimmery white cardstock for this is because I feel like my uh, marker has a better um, overall appearance because it doesn't soak down into the cardstock like it would on a regular Whisper White. Um, so that's why I use the shimmery white cardstock for this. So I'm just going to go ahead and color him in and you know, I, I didn't shade, I just kind of kept it simple, you know, kind of like a little third grade coloring lesson here, so. So there he is, all colored in. Not too shabby, huh? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the Big Shot and I'm going to cut him out using the stitched circle. And again, um, I used the stitch circle um, after I did all of my coloring and everything. And it's a tight squeeze, so you might have a little bit of it kind of going off the edges, um, but it should all work out just fine. So there he is. And then we're just going to get to making the card now which is just a simple card. Um, so we're going to adhere him onto our black scallop circle. Uh, no, we're not. We're going to adhere him onto our red circle. <laughs> That's what we're gonna do. I thought, well, that doesn't look big enough to go on there. Um, now we're going to adhere this and I don't generally do like you know the triple matting or the layering like this but I really thought that this needed that extra pop in there I'm gonna set that aside and let's go ahead and fold our card or score it if you prefer to pre-score um, Get my bone folder out. Give that a nice little crease. And our real red cardstock. I just absolutely love the color of this. It's just a really beautiful blue red that's pretty rich in color. And just paired up with this black and white makes for a striking card, I feel. And then we're gonna take this piece and do the same. Isn't that background cute? You know, you could even take it a step further if you wanted to and color in all of the crabs. That would be really cute too, but I was kind of being lazy and not coloring them in. And I do like the contrast of having the red one up top and then the black and white um, on the bottom. So let's go ahead and grab our, um, I'm gonna set this up here, and then we're gonna go ahead and put our white daisy strip just on this black. And the reason I kept, um, the reason I cut this, the 5 8 is because it was just the perfect size for our uh, ribbon, which now I don't know if I even told you that this is what I used. So I just used this real red stitch satin ribbon, which is also retiring. Um, and you might want to check, I forgot to check before I put this video together if it was still available. So, um, check on the Stampin' Up! 
website. It should be. Um, I don't think the ribbons have gone as quickly as a lot of the other products. So I'm just going to put that on here and then make sure that you put plenty of adhesive down here because you want that to stick to your um, cardstock underneath. So I just make sure I put some on my ribbon and make sure that now I've run out. So hold on a second. I need to go get more adhesive. I'm just going to grab my fast fuse because it was <clears throat> it was available. Now I need to this has a little bit of a trick to it. And I don't know if you guys have used the fast fuse before, but when you use it, you kind of have to do this little check thing in order to get it off, you know, to come off of the thing correctly. It's kind of a little trick to it. This I'm going to go ahead and just put, hopefully, in the center of my card. Sometimes I can't tell if it's centered or not until I go to look <laughs> at the video and I'm like, oh, that didn't look like it was centered. Um, but from this angle it does. Okay, so that's going to go on and see that just lays really nicely on there. Um, so let's go ahead and we're going to pop up our little crabby guy. And I'm going to try and finish off what's left of my dimensional elements from this particular package. And hopefully I left an area so it kind of, you want it to um, have your dimensional elements at the top and the bottom so you clear this. So I think he's going to go right here, which it looks like I did right. And then we're just going to take our ribbon and tie a bow the best we know how to. And I've learned, um, and I've said this in some of my other videos, but just in case you haven't seen them, I have learned to kind of finesse um, my little ribbon and talk nice to it as I'm, as I'm trying to tie my bow. So I always start with my ears a little bit larger, well actually a lot larger than what I intend, and then I'll hold this part of the knot down with my finger and work this piece down and as I do it I'm pulling downwards too so I'm trying to train my ribbon as I go in the direction that I want it to and that should be just about right so I'm going to pull it tight and then hold my knot and pull these down and I think I'm going to use my little glue dots because this guy has a mind of its own right now and I'm going to just put one underneath of it um, on each side to keep it in place so just kind of up here in the ribbon and see that ends up laying down a lot nicer when I do that instead of having it all kind of wonky so I'll put that underneath of here Hopefully if it doesn't stick to my scissors. Yeah, I really like the way that looks. And then we're just going to trim it up to the desired length. So I think maybe that looks about right. And there. Perfect! So not too shabby, huh? So I'm going to go ahead and recrease this and bring out my other card. And that's it. What do you think? It's a pretty simple card, pretty straightforward, but um, I just really like the little background of this. Um, so thank you so much for watching. I will have dimensions um, and instructions on my blog, jenscrappypages.blogspot.com if you would like to head over and take a look at it. And you can even print them out. So thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I will talk to you later. Hope you have a great day. Bye.